Welcome to Daily Office Devotions, where every Monday through Friday we consider some aspect of that day's scripture readings as given in the Book of Common Prayer. I'm Reggie Kidd, and I'm grateful to be with you. This is Thursday of the second week of Lent. Yesterday, we saw that Jesus' detractors are upset by his claim to be equal with God, John chapter 5, verse 18. In today's reading in John, Jesus begins carefully and patiently, and yet also quite plainly, to unpack what his being equal with God means. First, Jesus' equality with his Father does not put him in competition with his Father. The Son can do nothing on his own, John chapter 5, verse 19. He's not like Apollo, who supplanted his father Zeus in Greek mythology. God's Son is not in any way running his own program or pursuing his own agenda. During the history of the church, the Father and the Son have at times been wrongly placed in opposition to each other. Some have imagined an angry father needing to be placated by a supplicant son. John's Gospel provides a perfect antidote against that wrong kind of thinking. It asserts, God so loved the world that he sent. John chapter 3 verse 16. At the heart of the dynamic between father and son is mutual love. Amazing love, how can it be? Second, the son shares the father's power to raise the dead and to give them life. John chapter 5 verse 21. What will differentiate father and son in this regard is that as a man, the son will taste and defeat death from within death itself. His giving of life will be on the far side of his having received, as one of us, the same life that he will confer. Unfathomable mystery. Third, just like his father, Jesus the Son has an eternal, non-derivative life within himself. For just as the father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. John chapter 5, verse 26. Thus, Jesus anticipates and provides in John's Gospel an argument against the later heretical Arians who believe that Jesus was not eternal, but merely the first created being in the cosmos. Because of what Jesus says here, the maturing church of the fourth century was able to assert that while the Son is eternally begotten of the Father, there was never a time in which he was not and had to be born. More glorious mystery. Fourth, the Son, as much as the Father, has authority to judge. His mission, indeed, is not to bring condemnation, but rather in love to bear condemnation on behalf of an errant human race. John chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. However, He, no less than His Father, has authority to judge. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Fifth, the Son has the right to receive the same honor as the Father. John chapter 5, verse 23. In fact, Jesus boldly says, we can't honor the Father without honoring His Son as well. Sometimes Christians are accused of being jesus allators in our worship of Jesus. Well, we do worship Jesus, though not as an independent, standalone deity. We both worship the Father through Jesus, our worship leader, and we worship Jesus as equal in authority and as one in very nature with his Father. The math is complicated, especially when you consider, as other scriptures require us to do, the deity of the Holy Spirit as well. But the math works. We worship one God in three persons. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. We noted a few weeks ago on the Feast of St. John that John's Gospel became associated with the eagle because of its soaring and majestic perspective on Jesus' identity. I pray this outlook on who Jesus is creates in us power to persevere in whatever hardship we face, courage and hope for whatever task lies before us, and a passion for worship and praise all the days of our lives. Be blessed this day.